Hello. So these are questions that have come to me from Salt Lake City, Utah, from a middle school and elementary school music teacher. Um, her kids have sent some wonderful questions, and I thought before we get to the HD of Cenerentola on May 10th, it would be really fun to answer them. Some of these are really good questions, you guys. Grace asks, does my throat hurt after a performance? Grace if my throat hurt after a performance, I don't think I could do this very long. It's really important that I um, train myself really well so that I can do this without feeling anything. When I'm singing well, I can sense a lot of stuff happening in my body in terms of breath, but I feel nothing in my throat. Do I ever get tired of opera? Asks Kate B. Nope. Nope. Have you ever gotten sick and had to miss a performance? Asked Justine. No. Do you know one time I broke my leg and I finished the show and had to finish the rest of the performances in a wheelchair, but I've only canceled two performances, if I'm not mistaken, in my career that's now about 15 years long, and it was because my dad was in the hospital and I had to fly home and see him. But touch wood, some wood up there, I've never had to cancel because of sickness. I've sung sick a few times, but I've been lucky. Sage, you must be very wise. You ask, I would like to be a singer. How hard do you have to work to become as good as you? Well, thank you for the compliment, but to become a classically trained singer, you have to work extremely, extremely hard because you have to master a lot of things. You have to master singing, you have to master acting, you have to master different languages, you have to master musicianship, and you have to master an understanding about what you're singing about, which means life. So um, yeah, it's a big, <laughs> it's a big thing. I did um, five years of undergraduate in music education. I did three years in a conservatory in Philadelphia, and then I did two more years as an intern at an opera. So that's basically the same kind of training that a doctor does. No wonder I'm tired. What's your favorite dress you've worn and what opera was it in? Well, I love the dress that I'm wearing now for Cinderella. It's so pretty. But my favorite dress is one that I had designed for me for Drama Queens. And it was like a transformer dress by Vivian Westwood that changed. Um, I could add sleeves. I could add a bigger skirt. I could change the way it was designed. It's fabulous. Aiden, have you been in a play where you didn't sing? Yes, in high school, I was in Harvey and Picnic, and I played old ladies in both of them, and I won Best Actress in my high school, Bishop Meage High School. <laughs> but I missed it. I, it's been a while since I've done that. Um, Kendall asks, what do you do for warm-ups before an opera? So I have about a 20-minute regime that I've been doing, gosh, for at least 16 or 17 years now. And it's always the same, a lot of vocalizes, a lot of scales, always on a vowel. Um, and I know that as long as I'm healthy, by the end of those 20 minutes, even if I feel a little bit tired that day, that my voice is going to be ready to go. But that's a really important thing. It's like athletes have conditioning that they need to do when they go out onto a field for tennis or football or whatever. That's what I have to do. Oh! Okay, well, this is written by unknown but if you could meet one person in the world, who would it be? Oh my gosh. Ah, hmm. ah, that's really hard. One person. Hmm. This is really hard. Only one person. Hmm. Ah. Living or dead? one person. It's so much pressure. Well, I know who I would like to have dinner with tonight. <laughs> I have to come back to it. How do you choose? My gosh. Okay. Drillin. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. It says, do the boys have to wear wigs too? Sometimes they do. And sometimes they look good and sometimes um, ben asks, why do the girls have to wear wigs? Well, we don't wear wigs all the time, but oftentimes we're dealing with an opera that takes place in a very different time period where the hairstyle was very different than what we can do with modern 
era. For example, a lot of times in Mozart operas, they have white wigs because people back then in those times, they, they wore wigs as part of their everyday wardrobe. So if we're trying to be historically accurate with the costumes, we also have to be accurate with the wigs. Um, I get really pretty hair for Cinderella, so it's, sometimes it's fun. If I play a, a pants role where I play a boy, I also usually have to wear a wig to help make it look believable. Nicole, how fast can you, can you do a costume change? Okay, here's the thing. I can't do it very fast by myself. I usually have three people happening, helping me in a really fast costume change. And you'll see it at the end of Cinderella, Cenerentola here, I have about a minute to go from like Cinderella in her rags into the wedding gown and to get on top of a wedding cake. Um, and that's in about a minute and I've got somebody doing the veil and changing my clothes and putting on my shoes, giving gloves, adding lipstick. Yeah, it's crazy and that happens in about a minute. Maddie, how many days do you rehearse for an opera? You know, usually it's about three weeks, sometimes four or five if it's a complicated piece and if it's new, but generally now um, it's about three weeks. Everybody arrives and we all have our parts memorized and we're ready to go, so it's just a matter of putting us all together. Ashley, how long can I hold a note? Hmm, about this long? <laughs> uh, you know, I've never timed myself, but I think the longest note I've ever held was in Maria Stuarda, and it was like 16 measures of music and singing above the chorus, and you have to work really, really, really hard to build up to that, I'll tell you. It's like a swimmer swimming under water for a long time. Hannah, who has been my inspiration in opera? Oh my gosh, so many people. And I continue to be inspired. And it's performers who have come before me. It's composers who have written music that I get to sing. Um, Handel inspires me a lot because I have to work really hard to make his music work. My favorite singer, though, that has been really my um, idol and my mentor is Frederica von Stade. Google her. She's amazing. Brenna, do you have a favorite partner to sing with? Oh, I'm really lucky. Well, you're going to see right now in Cenerentola. We've all known each other for a long time. Many of us have shared the stage together a lot. And I tell you, it's like singing up there with just some of my greatest friends. And we get to make music together and we get to play and tell the story. And I, I, I get to marvel at how wonderful they are on the stage as well. So I'm lucky. The people that, that work in opera are generous and wonderful and super talented and interesting people. So I don't have a favorite, but I have a lot of people I'm really happy to sing with. Have you ever messed up and what did you do to fix it? Ha ha, yes I have. Um, sometimes you just keep going. I've missed lines a lot. I, I will often like make a little mistake in uh, text and you just keep inventing words until you get back on track. I also fall down a lot in opera and how do I fix it? I get up. The big thing is I don't act like it didn't happen because everybody saw it so you have to actually think okay I fell as Rosina or whatever character and how would they get up and you just go on it's not the end of the world it's only opera Ooh, Peter what is the importance of opera <laughs> good question um, it's probably too big for me to answer but I can tell you what I think about it I think opera brings out the very best in humanity I think the people who have written it over the years are extraordinary and they gave the world masterpieces. I think the people who wrote the texts work to understand humanity in an incredible way. And opera is really showing the best of what a human voice can do and expression and emotion. And it functions in the world of searching for truth and beauty and understanding. So I think it actually if we do it right, I think it can help us understand ourselves better and therefore actually be better people. Kind of what I think. What do you think? I want to know your answer down here. Peter, let me know what you think. Actually, all of you guys can. And Willem, is it worth all the work and time and effort to do opera? Sometimes, I'll be honest, sometimes it doesn't feel like it is. Sometimes it feels like it's more work than it's worth. And then every once in a while, somebody will tell me that it changed their life or it helped them through a really difficult time or it brought them immense joy. And when I hear that, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is worth it. But sometimes it's really hard. 
Um, and sometimes it's really great. So I do think it's worth it. What do you think? I loved your questions. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoy Cinderella. Uh, have a wonderful time. Uh, scream really loud in the theaters for all of us. Bring your friends, bring your parents, and let me know what you think of my answers. Okay, bye you guys. Mwah. Bye. Shoot, I didn't finish the question. <laughs> this is such a hard question because I think of living people, I think anybody would be fascinating. I would, my choice would be somebody who was involved in sort of a world politics to try and figure out what's happening in the world and to sit down and just try and talk sense to some people. Anyway, that's opening up a whole other can of worms. But my he I keep going back to people from the past because in a way I feel like I, I know people from the past by either singing their pieces or singing about them. Camille Claudel, she was a student and artist of Rodin. I mean, Monet. Um, Painters, composers, poets, I mean, so many people. Emily Dickinson, um, Handel, I have a feeling though he might be hard to talk to, I don't know, but he'd be interesting. Mozart would be a blast, oh my gosh. But I think I would love to sit down and be a guest at a soiree of Rossini. Right now I'm in Rossini land with Cenerentola, so he's on my mind. And I just think it would be a blast to sit down. First of all, he would cook a great meal, we would eat ourselves silly, I'm sure. And he would probably assemble an amazing group of conversationalists from a very fabulous period of time. Um, but God, Cole Porter, Leonard Bernstein, it's too hard. See, this is why I couldn't answer the question. But at the end of the day, I'm happy to sit down with anybody because I think you can always learn something from everybody, even people you don't agree with. Anyway, I'll think about it some more. Who do you want to sit down and have dinner with or meet? Let me know. Okay, now I'm really out of here.